and first uh uh i want to mention we had a uh a casual uh, member choice vote for Prince and uh, Daryl Neal's uh, image got first for members choice where we had members actually vote for the for the their favorite Prince uh, and Daryl got first in the monochrome. What? From what? For members choice. Remember we had a little uh, casual fun vote where members actually got to choose their favorites in the print when we had the last print competition. So I want to mention that. Um, I'm just trying to remember what I had in there. <laughs> yeah, well, that's this uh, got first. It was the favorite of whatever the, it was. It, it went over well. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it got a third, but it got first in uh, members' choice, and then first in color was photograph where I got it first in print, and it's called uh, and I shot that in Cuba, and that got that was members' choice for the color category. So I thought I'd share that with y'all. Um, just something light to do where members can participate. But anyway, let's begin with Scott, our judge. Uh, Scott, introduce yourselves, please. Hi, I'm Scott. Um, Scott, we don't say around. Uh, yeah, this is really just the link. There's a, a oh, link to a, an article, and this is the cover picture for that article. This is the picture I want to show. Um, so the article, which... Uh, we can share the link uh, if anybody's interested. You may have heard of the 12 elements of a image of merit. It's uh, a list of uh, elements or characteristics of an image. And it's been put out by the PPA, which I think is Professional Photographers Association or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's typically each of the elements is um, is talked about in like a paragraph, but they're kind of presented in a, a list, almost like a checklist. And uh, this article the, that uh, goes with that first image um, takes the elements and organizes them into sort of four uh, larger categories. And, and Not, I, uh, I don't see an image. You see the mind map? Nope. I see blackness. Everybody else see I, the I, image? I, I see it, Daryl. Right. Okay, I, I bet I know where it is. I see it. All right, so my other monitor. Yeah, you've had that problem so, before, Daryl. I've had that problem for a long time. <laughs> so, for um, yeah. there. Yeah. Cool. So impact is what we're after in an image. And if you start at the bottom left, you see color, presentation, lighting, technique. In uh, the author of that article, and it kind of made a lot of sense to me, is those are all elements related to technical ele excellence. If you have an image and it doesn't have uh, technical ex excellence, or at least technical very goodness, for to make up a word, um, it really it'll it'll subtract from your impact. Uh, but color, presentation, lighting, and technique are all part of technical excellence, and it's uh, something that's required in an image to be of merit. And then if you move up from that you see the center of interest in composition. And they kind of talk about how the center of interest is part of composition. It's not the only thing that's in composition. You can have balance and, uh, you know, the rule of thirds or uh, the golden mean spiral or, or whatever. There are a lot of things that can go into composition. Uh, it can be distracting things in the foreground or the background. Uh, but the center of interest is one of, is like the most important piece of composition in the author's mind. Uh, but those two go together. And then continuing around in a clockwise, you get to creativity and style. Uh, style is a part of creativity. And it's something that uh, 
the image maker brings to the process that makes it unique. And that all feeds into the impact. Something that's new and different is more uh, impactful than um, uh, something that, you know, everybody's seen before. Um, and then finally, the uh, subject matter and the storytelling is a key part of the impact. You could have a, a really excellent picture of a brick wall mm -hmm. and you could light it and do your composition, but it's still a brick wall and it's not really telling a story. I'm just kind of pulling things out of the air. And I think the storytelling and the subject matter, all this and the impact, but particularly the uh, storytelling, the subject matter, the creativity and the style, the stuff on the right side of this diagram um, are particularly relevant when you have a theme competition. Uh, if you're telling a story and the story doesn't match the theme, uh, you know, you might have a good story and you might, you might be good in all these things. But if it, if the story it's telling doesn't really match the theme, uh, it kind of takes away from, from the image in a theme competition. But it all comes down to impact. When you see it, and it's kind of like the old, um, uh, I guess it was the Supreme Court in a, a, a pornography uh, case or something. Somebody said, you know it when you see it. And uh, you know an image, not talking about pornography per se, but if you see an image, it hits you immediately if it has impact. You, it, you know, it kind of, um, it, you feel it. And uh, this is kind of an analysis of the things that bring something to impact. Uh, anyway, I look at all these uh, areas, or try to as best I can, and, and balance them out while judging. And it's, uh, it's not as easy. <laughs> I used to think uh, creating pictures was hard and then I tried judging and I found it's pretty hard too. And <laughs> uh, I do my best, but that's about all I can say. But this is, this is the method to my madness. All right. Thank you very much for sharing that. Very Glad you see sure. Wonderful. Never had a judge do it this way. So I Two barn hills are here. Who? Two barn hills are here. All righty. Just a reminder, we, have, we start off with monochrome, then we'll go to color. There's about 14 or 15 images per category, so it's on equal footing. There's going to be a first, second, and third for each category. Please, during this entire process, mute your mics. Very important. We don't want to hear unnecessary background, of course. We do what's called a silent run-through, where nobody says a, a word. And then we go back and then the judge alone makes a comment uh, or makes the, his, his uh, sage advice on, on his comment about each, each image. But we always start with a, with a silent run through on both monochrome and then we'll go to color do us, and then we'll go back through monochrome with the comments from the judge and then we'll do the color silent run through and then we'll go back at the beginning of the color and then the judge will proceed to uh, to uh, make comments. And then at the end of the whole thing, we'll announce the winners. Uh, actually, every image is a winning image in my view because you all participated, which is very important. So let me go ahead and begin with the monochrome. Um, here we go, silent run through, and then we'll come back to this image to start all over again.
All right, let me go back to the beginning. This is called Rambo Back Through. Okay, balls in your court, Scott, go ahead. This is titled Architectural Time Work. Right. Um, so this is uh, a fairly striking image. There's, uh, you know, parallel lines and parallel architectures from two different eras in time. Uh, in both cases, uh, uh, you know, reaching for the sky, pointing to the sky, but, and I don't know what the age difference in these buildings is, but I'd say it's probably at least a century or so. Uh, and so it makes a, um, a juxtaposition that accentuates the difference in uh, architecture over time. Um, and uh, the picture's very sharp, contrast, lighting, all those things that go into uh, technical excellence. Uh, those are good, in my opinion. Um, the clouds in the sky add a little depth without being distracting. If you had really dark clouds, it, you know, it could overshadow the buildings, but a completely white sky would, would uh, be boring. So I think there's a good balance that way. If I had to critique the composition, it's maybe a little tight left to right, but that's kind of picky. Uh, the storytelling, I'm sorry, what? Oh. Uh, storytelling wise, um, it's the story of how architecture has changed, building materials and science uh, over time. Uh, and it's got, it's got pretty good impact overall. Um, and it is relevant to the theme. Um, that's about all I got to say. All right. Next good. one. I like it. Next run, At Rest. Um, so this one, uh, again, the uh, the technical uh, aspects are good. Uh, light, shadow. There's a sense of motion from, um, I would assume this is a... Uh, slightly long exposure to get the clouds moving that way. Um, and yet everything else is in uh, sharp focus. Um, so you get some motion um, and uh, a sense of, of that, particularly if you've done photography, you recognize the motion. There's also the, uh, so the time, it's of a time length exposure and obviously the tide is out. Whoever parked the boat there with the anchor, that's been a while. And uh, so that's that's kind of an interesting uh, approach to it, too. So it's uh, the time of the exposure, the time of the tide going out. Um, composition, uh, if one wanted to be picky about it, uh, some people don't like things right smack dab in the middle. And it's not really smack dab in the middle, so that's pretty good. But I might lose uh, a little bit off the foreground, the sand, uh, so that it comes up more. But again, I'm I'm trying to be picky and say something negative. Um, but it's it's good it's a good image and it has an impact when you see it. Uh, the light and the shadows and the motion uh, are good. Uh, let's see, um, and I like it. And I think it's relevant to the to the theme. All right, next, next one, carving cobble. All right, so this one uh, again, we have a long exposure uh, to get the water moving like that, and we also have uh, what are clearly eroded rocks. If you uh, you ever uh, look at such things and think about, well, these rocks have been smoothed over uh, by the rushing water and that takes time. So it's, um, you know, that at least that's my interpretation of how it applies to time. Um, I see that particularly with the, the larger rocks on the edge of the water, the gravel, I guess it's smooth too. Uh, so it's a three, you know, having water, big rocks and little rocks gives you the three elements. Uh, there's a saying that 
good composition should have an odd number of elements. And this has sort of an odd number of elements in that way. Um, and the impact's pretty strong. It's it's a motion. You can almost hear the water running by. Um, and yes, I, it's relevant to the theme. All righty. That's it. Next one. Cotton oil and wind time. Uh, this one, uh, it's yeah you know, the stark white of cotton and uh, whatever that machine is uh, in the the middle of the field and the the wind turbines uh, makes an interesting picture. It's certainly sharp, uh, some good contrast going on. I tried to uh, I actually ask Doctor Google about. I thought maybe there was cotton oil or maybe that's an old oil field. And I found something about cotton seed oil. Uh, I wasn't, I kind of got off in the weeds trying to figure out how this applied to the theme mm -hmm. of times. It's, it's an interesting picture. And, um, but I really, uh, really had a hard time connecting it to the theme of, of time other than maybe if the, Oil well is something old timey. I don't know if that's an oil well that pumps natural gas, but it doesn't look like uh, my ignorant uh, image of a you know a giant oil tower and the wind power was you know a, a juxtaposition of old and new technology. But then the the well doesn't really look all that oil. It's I'm I'm just confused. Um, but technically, it's a it's a it's a very strong image. Um, and that's about all I got. All righty, next one. Daffodil Lifetime. All right. Um, a couple of years ago in a, a competition, I tried to do something like this myself, and it was pathetic <laughs> compared to this. This is a really good uh, image of a, uh, of a new blossom and an old blossom. Uh, it's very well done, uh, sharp focus. You got good bokeh, light and shadow, yeah, angles. It's, um, it's, it's strong um, technically and it's got good impact visually. Um, compositions balanced. Um, and the storytelling is, you know, birth and death. It's the cycle of life, and uh, you know it's good that way. Um, and clearly, I'm not sure how long uh, it is between uh, the birth of a blossom and the death, but it's uh, it's it's a relevant time span. It's it's not ages and eons, but it's a, a time span that we observe every year. Uh, so yeah, it's a good image. Uh, all righty. Next one is evolution and time create. Um, create this is what. Oh yeah, evolution and time create this. Thank you. Evolution and time create uh, the frog. Um, and uh, yeah, it's that's 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 a frog. That's a frog up close. Um, and it it won't it it literally jumps out at you so to speak. Um, but uh, the um, on the uh, the technical the frog is sharp and the composition you blur out in the background a little, but the colors and the well or the lack of color ends up uh, shades of gray. Uh, some places it's hard to differentiate the frog from the background, like uh, they, they don't separate as strongly enough. So the subject is kind of, uh, you have to work a little harder to, um, I mean, not his face and his eyes, but uh, where does the frog end and the background rocks begin? Um, might work a little stronger in color. Um, 
And um, let's see, where are my notes? Um, and so this, the story is from the title that it's evolution in time. Uh, and the subject of the, it's, it's creative to call this about, to pick the frog because evolution in time basically created all life. Um, but it, it's, it's creative in, in picking the subject. Um, and it's, I'm assuming that's a live frog. Um, so that's pretty impressive to get a, uh, to get that close and get him, get him all in focus, him or her, don't know which. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it kind of smacks you in the face um, with impact. That's about it. All righty. Yep. Next one. Uh, right. next past one. eating time. Past eating time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, probably not a good idea to eat this. Um, I read recently that uh, like potatoes and some other vegetables that once they sprout, that they're really not safe to eat. I mean, a little bit of uh, potato, a potato that started to sprout is, no, it's not going to hurt you, but if you have a weakened immune system, they can make you sick. And it's like, I didn't know this. That's something I've learned within the past year, and I'm not a young young kid. Uh, so uh, seeing this reminded me of, of that uh, little lesson that Dr. Google taught me about sprouting vegetables. So this is past eating time. Um, the composition is uh, and the lighting uh, is is very good. It's uh, you've got some curve and angle and uh, some tonality to it that so you really focus on the onion. Um, and um, it's it's placed. I like the curve that's in it. Well, there's actually more than one curve. There's a couple of curves, uh, so it's a very strong composition that way. Um, and um, what's in the image, um, you have to know, which I think we all know what an onion used to look like, but you get, uh, you, you see the passage, the time has passed and that's good. So um, it's, uh, it's, it's an interesting still life. I like it. Right. Next one is Rotenburg at exactly 12.01 p.m., 24th day of May. <laughs> yeah. Um, never been to Rothenburg. I, know, I assume it's with the name. It's somewhere in Europe. It's in Germany. Uh, Germany. Yeah, it's in Germany. Germany or uh, the Netherlands. In Germany. Uh, someplace, someplace yeah. with bergs. Yeah. Uh, and not, not icebergs. Yeah. Um, but the exposure is good, uh, very sharp. I zoomed in and looked at like all the little dials and things and the people in the windows. Um, it's uh, clearly depicting time and it's it's like a big clock. And at first I, I thought maybe it had years in there too, but it, it's just the day of the month and the hour of the day, which was kind of... Uh, uh it, it's an interesting building uh photographing it's difficult because the you need the you need the the top and this is really the top of the building you need the building to give it uh context uh but regarding the theme of time it's the the two clock faces the two circular dials uh in the middle at the bottom and it's kind of, you know, if you didn't know that this was about a theme about time or you didn't look at the title, you'd think, oh, this is a cool, cool building. And you might look at it long enough and, and notice uh, the, the two dials for the uh, day of the month and the hour of the day. Um, but it's really kind of secondary to the ornate 
top. And I don't, I don't know of a way that you could do that to make the, the clock face more the subject of the, of the picture. And that would, that's probably my, uh, only, you know, sort of suggestion. Well, I, I'm not even really suggesting an improvement. I just like, I don't know how you'd solve that, but it is, it's a little weaker because the clock faces are, um, a small part of the picture, you know, uh, they're not the, the central focus. Your eye goes up to the top in that turret and it's like, what's that got to do with time? And you look around and, uh, it's pretty cool, but it, it's a, it's a very challenging subject and I don't know that you could do it better, but, uh, that's, um, and it is relevant to time. It's just not as pictorially significant, the time aspect of it. Um, uh, I think that's about all I got. Okay, next one is spring forward. Okay. <laughs> so we all survived uh, springing forward with daylight savings time. Uh, this is clever and creative. Um, and uh, it's sharp. Uh, it's a little startling. It's it's relevant to our lives. It's relevant to the theme. Um, it's pretty sharp. Um, and um, and you know you've obviously got a spring, and the spring is springing, springing up. And and then I noticed that yes, whoever whoever did this took the the time to um, move the 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 hour the hour hand ahead an hour. So the the one on the left, the uh, watch I guess it's a watch face on the left reads just before four, and on the right side it's just before five. And so that's some good attention to detail. Um, definitely creative. Um, it's an interesting image, uh, even even without uh, saying spring forward or relating it, you know, by the title. It's uh, it's good that way. Um, if I had, which you know, if I had a suggestion, I think it'd be even better, in my opinion, if the watch face on the right was the one that was distorted and kind of smushed, and the one on the left. Uh, was the one that was round and normal because the springing forward all I think makes a lot of us feel kind of smushed and out of sorts so uh, uh, that would be my suggestion do it over and smush the watch on the on the right side rather than the left side but I guess that's for pushing it down so it'll, it'll spring up anyway it's an interesting picture um I could see that on the front of a newspaper or a magazine if if anybody looked at print <laughs> publications anymore. But yeah, it's a good it's a good image I like that. All right. Next. next next one is time passed and it's a composite. Uh so this one uh there's a lot of detail in the I guess that's wallpaper. Of course, just having wallpaper is is kind of old-fashioned these days uh and it's in disrepair and uh kind of a state of i'm not sure what you call it but it, it's it's weathered stained uh looks like water stains on the walls time has passed this is a an old building that uh, has time and i i guess i wasn't sh sure i mean I, i'll take your word for it that it's a composite the only thing i could think that was maybe a composite was the clock face that was added at the end of the hall otherwise uh, nothing about it tells me it's a com you know uh, it looks like just an image but uh the rules of the rules say it's a composite um that's like looking down the corridors of time sometimes we uh or at least I do visualize time like a long tunnel. Or if you look back at something from a long time ago, it's like looking down a long, a long hallway or something. So that was kind of like a visual 
uh, reminiscence of that. Um, and um, so it's a pretty strong image. It's good. All right, next one is time, please stop. All right, so this one, um, it has um, some good lighting and tone. Um, the contrast and the size of the hands, obviously an adult hand, uh, probably the mom's hand holding the baby's hand is in the foreground and draws attention. And of course, you know it's a baby because you see the baby's body fading off to the top. And um, so that, uh, even without, you know, looking at the title, it was uh, time, it's a precious time, it's uh, the time and the, the difference between birth and adulthood, um, which uh, is a good storytelling that way and it's relevant to the uh to it but then when i saw the uh, the title about time please stop and if you'll forgive me i'm uh, a granddad for the third time just recently and um anybody i think that's that's been a parent and watched their kids grow or watch their grandkids go it's that oh my god i wish i could stop time it's just you know they they really do grow up too fast um so it's um, it's poignant. It, it's not just the story, but when you, you, you toss in the title uh, of not just the contrast between the age of the two hands, but it's the the mom wishing, please stop. I thought it was a strong emotion, and it hit me because I got a a three no a, a one month old grandson and, and a four and a half going on 16 year old granddaughter. So, you know, the, this growing up too fast is really real in my life. And I think it is a lot of people's if you've had kids. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, okay. Yeah. Next one. Congratulations, by the way. Uh, next one is oh, time, thank you. timing the rotating beam. All right, so uh, taking uh, photos of lighthouses at night is so, so hard. I have tried it, and none of my attempts look anywhere near this good. This is a really awesome photo of a lighthouse at night. Um, to get the stars there, to get the beams of light, to get the, the building, the surrounding buildings, get the foreground. Uh, somebody, somebody worked hard on this, this image. Um, and it's it's a it's a strong strong image because of that. Um, the um, again, I sometimes I if I was going to uh, say something about the composition that was at all a suggestion for improvement. It would be to maybe lose just a little bit of the foreground. There's maybe a little too much foreground uh, for my taste. Uh, maybe a square composition, play around with it some. Uh, just the the driveway in the foreground is is not really an important part of the picture. Um, and you know, if, if you had a little less foreground, it would be even stronger. Um, uh, to get uh, the notion of time and to relate it to the theme, you have to um, either know that beams rotate and it, it requires the title that says uh, timing the rotating beam. Um, so that's a little less obvious, uh, a relationship to time uh, without the title. Um, and uh, the impact, it's a, it's a strong image. It's, I can almost hear crickets uh, in my head. Um, I like it. I wish it was mine. All righty. Next one next. is Uninhabitable Earth. 
Okay, so I think I said earlier something about uh, compositions should have three elements or an odd number of elements is um, is one of those rules of thumb. And this one's got um, three. You got a book. You've got some uh, glasses. Can't tell if they're bifocals, but they're glasses. Somebody's been reading the book, and you've got an hourglass. So it's uh, it's kind of clever, and they're all three things that we associate with time. We need glasses as we get older, especially reading glasses. Uh, life after warming is if um, one of those timely topics and uh, it speaks directly about you know a future time and of concern. Um, and then you got the hourglass uh, which is obviously another time time reference. So this this is very tied into time, and somebody created this image uh, very deliberately. Uh, so uh, that's good. And the um, the impact of, and the, the sharpness in the image it's 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 good that way too. Um, what was I going to say? Um, oh, yeah. My, my one suggestion for improvement would be uh, to take the hourglass and have, much, right now it looks like there's a lot of sand in the top of the hourglass. If uh, you believe the Al Gore and the global warming and the uh, all the warnings of that, and of course, a title like The Uninhabitable Earth, makes it sound like uh, we're running out of time. It would be a little stronger if you had the hourglass have uh, more sand in the bottom and much less sand in the top. But eh, it's a good image. I like it. All righty. Okay, next we do the color and we'll do the run through. Again, no comments, please. And of course, reminder, remember to mute your mics. So here's the silent run through, just like with the monochrome. So let's begin with the color. I think it does it. Yeah, okay. Let me go back to the beginning. Rambo going back. Okay, this is the first image we started with. The title here is The Knob. The Knob, The Knob. Um, so this one, you have um, good lighting, uh, colorful, well-balanced. And you have the long exposure to get the clouds moving and sense of motion for that. Uh, so that's your sense of time. I'm not sure what I'm not sure what the knob is, uh, other than the knob. Uh, what if it's uh, somebody? I mean, it looks built up, but I'm not sure what that is. The path, the time it takes to walk out there. Somebody put time into building it, uh, but primarily it it seems to be the motion, the time exposure. Um, Color's good. Rocks are sharp, well balanced. Uh, it's pretty. Um, uh, I guess that's about all I got. Yeah, the next one is A Day in the Light. It's a composite. 
who is that funny looking fellow? Um, sorry, couldn't resist. Um, so uh, this is a uh, this image uh, sparks curiosity, or did me and me when I first saw it. Um, and um, it took me a, a minute to realize, and the title helped. It's like, oh, this is the same person three different times in the day. Uh, and uh, it's definitely creative, uh, shows the passage of a day. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's clever and creative. It's definitely a deliberate image. It is a composite. Um, I guess a little, uh, looks to me like the shoe, the nearest shoe of the morning where he's tying his shoes looks a little less sharp, uh, and the lighting's a little um, um the the guy sitting on the sofa with I guess that's a remote control. Uh he looks a little artificial, uh like he's placed there, like he was part of a composite. Uh, but um the light coming in on his hair from one side, you don't see that bright light uh from the others, which that got me thinking about um you know the other than that, the light in the room seems to be kind of uniform. So, like, it would be I – mean, I just uh, – I, I thought it was a fascinating uh, uh, concept and an approach to doing this uh, this image. I kept trying to think of ways, like, if you had the early morning sun uh, on the uh, tying shoes and, you know, some something to do with lighting to make it less – uniform uh but it's a very clever idea um and um the colors are strong composition's pretty balanced other than my nitpicking about fuzzy shoes and light on the hair just partly because i don't have hair um <laughs> but it, it hey i heard that <laughs> that's fine <laughs> you're laughing with me gotta laugh to keep from crying <laughs> um anyway uh it's a, it's a good picture um uh, very clever and does definitely relate to time all righty next one uh, the oh the, the book he, the magazine should be should be reading the time machine okay or some or or time magazine hey all righty <laughs> okay the next one is cannot dodge time uh -huh. Uh, this is a very uh, strong image. It's, you know, right in your face. I don't know if this was taken at Old Car City or uh, Smith's Farm or somewhere else, but um, the, the patterns of rust are very uh, uh, strong in the colors. Uh, it's very striking. Um, the word dodge at the bottom doesn't look quite as sharp in focus as the emblem in the middle. Um, nitpick um but it's late in the day you can see the shadow um of the emblem and it's got a little bit of for lack of a better word almost like rembrandt lighting going on on the crest um so that it evokes an image of time more than flat lighting uh and obviously the rust um um I don't know what it's some kind of old dodge obviously but it's a clever title can't dodge time um and it's bold um uh, it's good right next don't one buy, don't buy that car though you have problems if you buy that car okay next one is layers of time all right i am fairly sure that's the grand canyon um and I think I may have stood very near the same spot and tried to take a picture. This is this is really well done. Um, and when you go there, you're very aware of the layers of time, of the eons of time that have gone into wearing that rock down. 
into all those shapes by that little teeny trickle of a river. Um, so it's technically very good. You've got good colors. You've got uh, late afternoon uh, lighting, uh, pretty sharp. It's interesting, the sky is almost monotone, um, which focuses your eyes uh, on the rock. It, it's it's not completely devoid of color, but I think, uh, I suspect they, whoever uh, made this may have desaturated the sky a little bit, and uh, that's an artistic, if so, if not, well, I'm crazy, but it, it looks like the sky's been uh, made more gray. A late afternoon sky would probably be more distractingly orange. And so by desaturating the sky or getting lucky with a gray sky, uh, it it accentuates uh, the rock, which is what you want, and the, the layers. So um, that's uh, technically great and technically done to accentuate what you want to accentuate. Um, storytelling, it's as old as the hills or the valleys. Um, anyway, it's good. All right. It's striking. Next one is nothing lasts forever. Um, so this is a uh, an interesting picture. It's uh, the the bust on the the pillar almost looks like what? Or it, it's like a, a I don't know. And, and then the finger pointing up, and I'm not sure what that dismembered limb is on the left, or the little knob. But things fall apart, and um, you know the the title helps. I mean, it's a curious picture um to begin with uh and it's it's memorable it's the kind of thing you see that you, you remember it the colors and the composition are good and the title helps uh bring it in that you know it's and start thinking about it, it's like well if this guy had a statue of him if there was a statue of him he was obviously a great man even greater than me since there are no statues of me mm -hmm. of and I'm very modest, uh, but uh, anyway, and and this kind of look of puzzlement of like, you know, what happened uh, on his face? It's it's interesting. So uh, yeah, nothing lasts forever. Uh, I think there's some biblical references about that too. I don't know if it was Ecclesiastes. Uh, anyway, good image, uh, and I like the colors. Uh, Maybe if I was going to critique, maybe there's a little soft focus in somewhere, but I'm not I'm not sure. Soft rock, um, but it's good. I like it. All right, and it's pointing up. All right, next one is old clock. All right, the old clock. Uh, something puzzled me when I first looked at this, and it's like. And then I realized that the uh, the numbers on the clock face, the Roman numerals, are counterclockwise. It's like 11 is where 1 should be, and 1 is where 11 should be. And, and, I don't, and, and that just puzzled me. <laughs> if it, I guess it was reversed, perhaps. But then you've got the, the little... Uh, writing on the white, I guess that's like a piece of paper that says to wind turnkey counterclockwise, which is kind of ironic because the numbers are counterclockwise. Anyway, uh, maybe thought a little too much about that, but it was interesting. It's obviously a time piece. Uh, time, to, um, <clears throat> time references that way. The tones in the wood are... Uh, or um, showing off they're lovely. Uh, it looks like the clock is not quite square, and I suspect that's maybe uh, not lining the camera up with it quite square, but that's a little distracting. It, it seems to, like, be leaning to the left, and maybe it just is warped. Uh, I don't know, but in, in the image, that's, that's mildly distracting. Um, 
with the images and the color, um, it's all good. Um, and yeah, of course, a clock is going to be relevant to time. It has to be. All right. Old Mill. All right. Um, I almost think I've seen this somewhere before, but uh, it looks, it is old and it looks old. And I think the vines, um, I mean, the, the vines really accentuate the um, the fact that time has passed and it's an abandoned or neglected building. I mean, if if it wasn't covered with vines, yeah, you'd, you'd say it's an old building, but the the vines really kind of uh, accentuate the the passage of time, and there there are enough vines there that you can't miss them, but there are not so many vines that they overwhelm the picture and that. You know, it, it, and with the lighting, it's it's really well done. So that you focus on the building, and then you notice the vines, rather than you see the vines and then notice the building hiding behind them. So, so that's really well done. Um, the um, and it, it just accentuates old, and that this is some time. Some time is this is hasn't been used in a while. I don't know <clears throat> that you need to know that it's a mill, but whatever it is, it hadn't been used in a while. Um, the vignetting, it looks like there's a little bit of vignetting in the corners. And <clears throat> that also adds um, a touch of um, kind of like looking through a telescope back in time at something that's or a, a faded memory. I kind of think visually sometimes if, uh, vignetting. Um, so I think the vignetting uh, adds to it significantly. I like that. Uh, that's it. Hey, perfect timing. You know, this whoever took this had perfect timing. Uh, good. Great great luck on finding that dive. I assume this is like a burst mode uh, image that's been um, bended, blended together or some kind, some kind of, now I don't think it says it's a, a composite, um, but I don't know how you do that without being a composite. And maybe that's just because I don't know what I'm doing, but uh, maybe if you, there's probably uh, some cameras that would produce something like this in camera without having to use Photoshop to composite it, um, a multiple exposure. Ah, that would, that's probably what it was. Uh, but anyway, the, the colors and the images, it's, it's very striking. Um, my wife was looking over my shoulder when I was looking at these pictures and she goes, Oh, I like that. So, um, yeah, should probably buy it from you, but um, it's uh, the colors, the the motion, uh, and it's really something that probably only took place, well, in a couple, a second or two. So there's not a lot of time that actually passed, but you do get the sense of motion and time, and then the the water being smooth like that uh, has that dreamy look that. Uh, that waves and water get. Um, if I was going to improve it, uh, I'd put my name on it and say it was mine. No, no, I can't do that. Um, maybe, maybe lose the rocks over on the right. They're kind of, although they do add balance for the ship, the, the boat in the background. Uh, I think if you had an image that had just the the bird and the boat and the water, it might be a little little stronger without the rocks distracting. Thinking out loud here, um, but yeah, it's 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 a cool picture. Lots of cool pictures in this competition. You make make this job hard. Stop it. All right. Next one is Tempest. Tempest. I think that's a Shakespeare play. 
Um, yeah, you can, uh, so long exposure with water. Uh, but it's interesting because the water's not all going in one direction. Um, and it's a long exposure, so you got some time elements there. Um, and it's, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's a stronger than, than it's stronger having the water going in multiple directions and having the shadows and light than if, uh, if it was all in one direction. Um, but it isn't quite as strong on, I mean, it is relevant to time because you're a long exposure, but it's probably not quite as strong as some of the other images uh, when it comes to, to being time. Uh, but it's, it's one of the best water pictures I've seen. So it's good. All right. The next one is the path of life weaves through eternity. All right. Um, the tie it's, um, I guess it's an overcast day. It's just, a, it's a little, the lighting's a little flat and a little dark. Um, uh, not as much contrast. Um, I think given the title of, of going through eternity, maybe some uh, masking or something to make it, uh, I mean, obviously, we all end up in the something like this place eventually. Um, and there is a path. The path kind of wanders out of the frame uh, about halfway up the, the screen. So that would be a slight improvement. But to maybe darken it, darken it uh, toward the back. So it's like you start off in the light. And as you wake your, work your way through the cemetery and get to those purple flowers in the background, if you could uh, use like a, a gradient uh, filter or something there to, um, so that you're going from light to dark and it's more than just, just the path, you'd see a transition. I, I think that would make it a, a stronger uh, image uh, and uh, tell the story that it's telling because yes, there is a path and we, we go through this. Um, uh, I think it would be a little stronger though, if, if you played with the light. So to accentuate the, the progression, uh, that's sort of my suggestion, but it's a, it's a cool idea. It's um, to get the path in there not, not just the cemetery. Cool. All right. Next one is, Time smooths all. Entropy. Um, in this case, I think the um, the soft focus on like uh, the blades of grass being kind of fuzzy and the whole thing kind of contributes to the whole idea of smoothing and the erosion and wearing down. Um, and that works with the title. Um, I think if if I hadn't had the title, I'm not sure that I would have connected the dots for time relevance. But it but that, that the title did certainly helps and start thinking about entropy and erosion, and it's a, a very lovely uh, tones. It's it's mood. It's coastal. And of course, it's sunset, and sunset re reminds one of the passing of a day. And uh, you know, as the day as the day ends, I guess that. Well, I guess it could be a sunrise, but it looks more like sunset to me. I don't know how you tell the difference, um, but it's lovely. Colors are good. I think that's it. All righty. Next one is time's arrow runs downhill. All right, this one, um, train, it's a train. Um, 
I thought it was interesting looking at it um, that the the engine, the train engine and its cow catcher on the front appear more aged, more decrepit, more older uh, than the rest of the train. And it, it may be just that we can't see the the box cars in the back, but they don't look as old. And so that kind of gave me the impression of uh, of time. It's like the, the leader of the train is older than the back of the train, kind of like the older generations that lead the way are older and the younger generations are new and not as weathered now. And um, the fact that, you know, the train does appear to be going downhill. And sometimes we think of life after a certain point as going downhill. It was all some some kind of clever imagery and and metaphors. Um, and it's it's a sharp picture of a train. And who doesn't like trains? Um, and then I think yeah, the arrow, the the cow catcher on the front of the the train makes it like an arrow pointing pointing the way. Um, if I was going to critique it, it's maybe a hair hair too tight around the front of the engine. If you had not much, but just a little more space, uh, it might be a little stronger. If you look at the space between the back of the train and the frame, there's significantly more space there than there is here at the, the front. And maybe that was intentional. Uh, but I find it a little distracting that the, the point of the, the cow catcher is about to run right right out of the frame. You know, maybe that's the point, but I found it a little discomforting. Of course, I find getting old discomforting too, but mm -hmm. it's another story. Um, but yeah, it's a good picture. It's It's clever. All righty. Next one is time's up. Um, I think this is is this the last picture? No, it's one more. Yeah, no, I thought time's up was the last one. No, nope. oh no, no, you're right. There is one more. I was I was going to say, well, that's clever making time's up be the last picture. Uh, how did they know that? Um, I can't tell what this is. Um. I'm guessing some kind of light painting with um, and the trees. And it's obviously uh, light painting involves, uh, you know, a long exposure in time. And, uh, you know, you get the motion of a point of light against the backdrop, backdrop of the, uh, the foreboding trees. Um, but I, I was really just more puzzled. Uh, it, it just kind of puzzled me. Uh, it looks like there's a wall that's fairly visible. It's an interesting picture. And I don't know what the white things in the sky are. If those are stars, this is a long exposure. Uh, it, it gets your attention. Um, and then there's some kind of light reflections. Uh, if, you, if you look up above the blue white circle, there's kind of like a a blue reflection in the trees. Um, it's interesting. It, it's like you can't quite stop looking at it, but I can't quite figure out what it is. And I guess my time's up to talk about it. So uh, time's up. Okay. Next one is West Fort. Blowing bowl. Say that five times in a row. No, thanks. Uh, so this one uh, has uh, good lighting on a long exposure. You can see some of the rocks through it. It's not just the water, so that adds to it. Uh, some contrast in the water. Some of it's uh, dark and not, not opaque. You can kind of see things through it and it almost looks like a face behind the water right in the middle. Uh, so it's an interesting water picture and it's a, a good uh, timed exposure. You can, um, again, you've got erosion. Uh, 
that happens with uh, with water passing and it's a, a timed exposure. Um, and um, it's a way of taking what, if, if we just look at water with our eyes, we perceive it differently than when you use a camera with a, a long exposure. You see the water and you see the movement, but you don't see the blur. And I think as, as humans, we, we tend to think of time in the moment. It's like you, if you looked at this, you'd think of it as a moment by using the camera. Uh, you perceive it as a, a time span. So it's kind of clever that way. The same could be said for the, the other water pictures too. But, uh, this is good. All righty, let's go to the winners. So I'm going to scroll back to the monochrome and I'm going to let you know third first, a little bit of a surprise. No, we're not sure which one it's going to be, but third place goes to Uninhabitable Earth by Daryl Neal. Daryl? Yeah, I've got to come out of being mute. Oh, okay. I, there you go. Congratulations. Third place. Okay, so it was indeed something that I assembled um, because I, I, want, I got this idea of using the hourglass. And so I ordered a very inexpensive hourglass from Amazon that arrived just a few days ago. And then that book, I have to tell you, unfortunately, if you read that book, your response will probably be to head for the nearest bar and order the stiffest drink they've got. It's, I do that anyway. It's a, it's a, it is not a happy book. So anyhow, and those are my glasses there to make it look like I've been reading the thing. Yeah. Very good. Very it's good. Uh, very good. Uh, I like the way you designed it and simple and to the point. Yeah. It cheers me up. Thanks, Daryl. <laughs> I had right. one critique. I had one critique of it myself. It was shot using focus stacking. So I could get every all the writing on the book in focus. And I should have continued on across the table because you'll notice the back part just gets all blurry, which you may think, well, you know, it's supposed to be far away. Uh, I don't like that aspect of it. Okay, second place. Here we go. That's it. Second place, Mr. Rutherford. Congratulations, Tom. Woo! It's called <laughs> Spring Forward. Right. Tom well, it's self-explanatory. <laughs> how'd you do it? Yeah, well done. Well, I, you know, I should have said composite, but I think that's obvious. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I uh, in Photoshop, I use Liquify on the left, left yeah. the one that's kind of bent. I, I wanted it to look sort of like it was crouching down into the into the spring, getting ready for the big leap on the right. That was how okay. I interpreted it. Yes, daylight savings time. Yeah, yeah. yeah you mash time. mash the spring down, and you you're so strong, you bend the the watch. Yeah, <laughs> creative. I thought I thought it was very creative, and it was right on on the theme. This nice. was a difficult theme, folks. Yeah, yeah. I like it. It's fun. It's a fun shot. Get your attention. You're gonna want to look at it. I like it. Thanks. Good job, Tom. Well, Thank you. Well, well, First well, place. Well. Go ahead. Any other comments? Okay, I, I do think the suggestion that uh, Scott made about flipping the, uh, the, the, you know, the liquefying the right side versus left was a good one, but again, that's subjective. But just my thought. All right, let's go back and see what first is. Here we go. We're getting there. First place is Emily Helm. Time, please stop. She's a new member. Thank hey. you. Congrats. Thank you. Emily, you're here. Ready? We can't see you. Oh, I'm sorry. There you go. <laughs> Tell us about it. Um, so this is actually a picture of me and my, my nephew. Um, it was a weekend that he spent with me so his parents could have a weekend off. He is now four years old. He was uh, probably about six or seven months in this picture. And it was just kind of like the other picture that I took of us. Well, 
Tell him he's a photo photographic star. Oh, I will. And he's he's going to get a first place ribbon. <laughs> a, new member, a new member, too. So, Emily, make sure when you come to the next meeting, you get that blue ribbon you deserve. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely that's awesome i love i love it when new members do well it really is a pleasure uh, it's great to see all right uh got a lot of variety of people winning here so let's go to color and again we'll scroll through and just kind of see which one it might be you never know i'm not sure when it's going to let's see get to that uh, not that one it's going to be third place goes to daryl neal cut it out daryl times Arrow runs downhill. That's third place. All right. So that was in Skagway, Alaska. And I came across that deteriorating engine and it really attracted me. I have to say that I'm usually not as big a fan as some in this group of rust, but it really fit with this one. And I also have to say that Scott's interpretation of the locomotive at the lead of the the train being in bet in worse shape than the young ones further back. I hadn't seen that. That was that was a very insightful interpretation. So thanks. Yeah, and also with that train you got a lot of good uh close ups of rust and patterns. I'm oh sorry. I have some I just didn't break them out. Yeah I'm okay. Yeah. Anyway, let's go to second place. I wonder who that's gonna be. Let's see here. Let's see where it might go. Oh, we flip around a little bit, see what it could be. Uh, how about bingo, second place, Layers of Time by, uh, it's getting real boring, but Daryl again. Um, so Scott pegged it exactly, Grand Canyon. Yeah. Probably most anybody goes along that walk, sees that vista. And I was really entranced. I don't recall I did anything to the sky. It was just kind of a gray sky. But the light was coming in and hitting that one promontory. And I, it's just a picture I really, really like. Uh, I have to say, if I was going to recommend a U.S. National Park to go to, is the first one, Grand Canyon. That place yeah, is something. Yeah, I, I got shots like this, look, kind of like this, but I, I got more of that red glow. I like the soft colors you got out of it. It's yeah, good lighting. Well, it, it takes, it's, 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 it's not very often you get this kind of soft tones with it. Um, and get a lot, you know, a lot of people look for the bright reds, but it's it's a lovely shot, Daryl. Okay, first place. Let's see who that could be. Let's see, and that's going to be me. I wonder who that is. Uh, Day in the life. I did this several years ago. If you can't tell, um, I took one shot of the room, and then I took three shots, and then I carefully pinned out my own figure and put it in each and put it in the frame without me in it at all. So I carefully pinned me me three times. So so you you were composited in? Yep. Oh. And so I, I maybe did three pictures when nope. you were in that position. Well, no, I, yeah, I took I took three pictures, but then I had to take three pictures. I took four. I took one with me not in it, and then the other three with me in it. And I pinned my, I literally cut myself out and oh. put myself in and I added the shadows that I needed. Well, it's excellently done. So it, it, it took somewhere. Another strategy would be in Photoshop would be to, now this is in the Photoshop before the content aware and all that other stuff. But if you're going to do this, you have to pin it because content aware isn't going to do the job you want it to do. So you have to use the pin tool, which is very detailed. But another way to do it would be to mask my figure and then invert it and then just erase the background. That's another way to do it. That's one way to cut it out. So there's two different ways to do it in Photoshop, but this was using uh, the pin tool, which is what you use when you really want it to be perfect. And then I needed to try to add the shadows to my figure because I didn't, I didn't really pin the shadows. So I had to add the shadows to kind of make it look more real and three dimensional. So anyway, that's what I did. It, it was a, it was a chore, but it was interesting. Well, well done, Mike. But, you know, the guy on the left, it looks like your shoes are floating off the floor. Is it yeah, just... you, you, Mark, you beat me to it. I I, know, I knew that right away. I, I got asked to do this to, turn, to enter some last minute. I thought, well, I just threw it in. 
Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I agree. I agree. That's that's called an experience. You're you nailed it, Mark. I totally agree, and that's easy to fix. Uh, but that's this was a new thing for me back then. I was learning, so you're right. Uh, that's a flaw, and you're right. Maybe I was floating. You know, you never know. I never know. <laughs> but you're right. That is a flaw in the photograph. Uh, you know, when you enter a photograph like this, it's got a lot, a lot into it. And so the more that you put into it, the more technical aspects that go into the photograph, your chances of winning can go down because there's more things to find that are wrong with it. But you're right. And uh, that's, it's an easy fix. And so um, 